Yeah, the senior advisor to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Mark, welcome to the program. Thanks for taking the time. So now we know there's been no, some pleasure. clarification from your government as to what the Prime Minister was indicating, that there may be a temporary security um, hold uh, over Gaza by Israel. But in terms of who will be governing Gaza, aside from saying it won't be Hamas, we don't have a definitive answer from the Israelis. And today we heard from U.S. Secretary of State Blinken sort of the closest signal of where the U.S. stands on this. Take a listen. We must also work on the affirmative elements to get to a sustained peace. These must include the Palestinian people's voices and aspirations at the center of post-crisis governance in Gaza. It must include Palestinian-led governance uh, and Gaza unified with the West Bank under the Palestinian Authority. And it must include a sustained mechanism for reconstruction in Gaza and a pathway to Israelis and Palestinians living side by side in states of their own with equal measures of security, freedom, opportunity, and dignity. So we heard him say Gaza should be unified with the West Bank under the Palestinian Authority once the war ends. Is that a position that Israel agrees with? And do you think it's one that could hold, given what we saw in 2007, after the PA was effectively kicked out of Gaza? How do you avoid another coup if the PA comes back? I mean, you raise some very important points because, as you just said, when Israel pulled out of the Gaza Strip in 2005, we, it was handed over to the Palestinian Authority. But they lost power to Hamas shortly after that, and Hamas has ruled ever since. Uh, uh, 16 years of Hamas rule, and what has it brought the people of Gaza? Hardship, suffering, pain, and impoverishment. So it's clear when this is over and Hamas is no longer running the Gaza Strip, there'll be opportunities, I think, for, for Gazans that didn't exist before, important opportunities. As you said, though, however, Israel is not interested in just uh, 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 letting things fall apart after we, after we destroy Hamas. We have to make sure that the security situation is stable. We have to make sure there isn't a residual terrorist element that starts to grow again. And Israel will not, cannot ignore what but, goes on in Gaza, but, yes. But just, just to confirm, do you support, does Israel support what appears to be the U.S. position, and that is that when the war is over, uh, Gaza should be unified with the West Bank under the leadership of the Palestinian Authority? So it's, it's not the right time for us to talk about that, and I'll explain why. Uh, as you know, just over a month ago, Hamas butchered our people in the most horrific way. It's all been documented on CNN. The, the, the murders, the massacre, uh, uh, the rapes, the beheadings, the burning of people alive, the shooting of children, we, we, it's all been said. And, and the whole world has condemned that, but not the Palestinian Authority. The Palestinian Authority in Ramallah has refused to condemn Hamas. And for Israelis, that's a problem. Because you can't say you're a partner in some sort of, you know, live and let live, a partner in peace even, and at the same time refuse to condemn the Hamas uh, atrocities, uh, atrocities against innocent civilians. Uh, today, as we speak, Hamas is still holding 240 uh, Israeli hostages, of them 32 children, of them babies, toddlers, uh, under three, under four-year-olds. It, it's gruesome, it's disgusting, and it needs to be condemned. And yet people who claim to be the moderate Palestinian voices, people who claim to be uh, the international community's interlocutors on the Palestinian question, they are silent, refusing to condemn. And, and Israel, for Israel, it's a problem. I think you bring up, uh, Mr. Regov, some important points there. Um, I do want to focus also on domestic politics within Israel. As you know, there have been so many calls for your boss, Prime Minister Netanyahu, to take responsibility for possible failings that may have opened up a pathway for October 7th to happen. He has not done so. He's come out and said, look, the focus right now is on dismantling and defeating Hamas. We can have that conversation later. However, the head of Shin Bet has come out and taken responsibility. The head of IDF military intelligence has come out and taken responsibility. Even Naftali Bennett, who wasn't even in power for that long, on our show, came out also and took responsibility. Why is it the right time for them to take responsibility, but not for the prime minister? 
So the Prime Minister has said publicly, uh, and, and believe me, he knows the buck stops there, but he said publicly when this is over, the questions will be asked, investigations will be uh, undertaken. We have a history in this country after security mishaps and what happened on October, uh, October 7th was clearly a disaster. Uh, and so there, there, there are questions that have to be asked, there's investigations that have to be taken. And the Prime Minister said, I myself, will be uh, at the top of the list of the people to, right, to, but he, to be he's, questioned. But Mark, be... he's talked about that happening at a later date. Why not just come out and say right now, listen, I am devastated as Prime Minister. I love this country. I'm devastated by what happened on October 7th. I know, as you point out, Mark, that the buck stops with me. I have been in power for far too long not to bear some responsibility. But going forward, I promise you that I will do my utmost to protect Israel. Why not say something like that? Because the longer you leave it, the more it becomes a thing and the more people continue to talk about the Prime Minister failing to take responsibility here. So exactly the opposite has sort of happened since the war broke out because you saw parties who were in the opposition who were very, very critical of Netanyahu have actually joined him for the duration of the conflict because this is a time for national unity in the, in the face of a common threat. And so this is a time now to focus on defeating Hamas, on winning this war a war we didn't want, a war that was forced upon us, but we must nevertheless win it and win it decisively. And when that's over, there'll be plenty of time for politics and for investigations. But the focus today, uh, from my Prime Minister's perspective, has to be on winning the war. Mark, let me return back to something that you touched on, which I just am shocked is not getting more condemnation and coverage repeatedly around the world. And that is the unacceptable 240 plus Israeli hostages that are currently held in Gaza right now, as you mentioned, a number of them small children. Now, you have said earlier uh, that Israel's campaign and its aggression against Hamas, Israeli intelligence believes, will help and improve the chances uh, of releasing those hostages. I'd like to get you to respond to what Haaretz is reporting, and that is that Egypt is holding advanced talks on a Gaza-Israel ceasefire in exchange for the release of some hostages uh, held by Hamas. Can you give us any more insight into this? It's been over a week since the ground operation has expanded, and yet we have not seen the hostages released. So we haven't seen the hostages released because Hamas is, is, is brutal, is horrific, and is capable of, of the most terrible violence. We saw that clearly on October 7th. Uh, there has to be pressure on Hamas. Hamas isn't going to suddenly release our hostages because they've turned into Boy Scouts or they've become humanitarians. It's not going to happen. Hamas will make a power calculation, and it, we have to keep the military pressure up on Hamas beef that pressure it up, ratchet it up until Hamas starts to feel that it has to do something and starts to release the hostages. At the same time in parallel, you talked about Egypt, there's also in Qatar, there are talks going on behind the scenes to see is it possible to facilitate a, a, a release of hostages and Israel is open to the, uh, an arrangement which sees our people getting out, obviously. Uh, the Qataris, you know, in Qatar, they host the Hamas leadership. Uh, they're under criticism. How can you host people who murder babies? How can you host these, these terrible terrorists? And Hamas, say, uh, sorry, Qatar says we host them because uh, that gives us leverage, that gives us influence, and that gives the West uh, a, a way to speak to Hamas and we can moderate their behavior. Okay, uh, we'd say to the, Qatar, uh, the Qataris government, if you believe that you can uh, uh, deliver the release of hostages, now's the time to put up. Now's the time to show that your relationship with Hamas bears fruit, because otherwise there's no justification for having a relationship with this brutal uh, uh, terrorist organization that has committed such atrocious crimes against my country, frankly, crimes against humanity. Indeed. Um, Mark Regev, we appreciate the time today. Thank you, Mark. Thank we you. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Well, coming up after the